Leaning forward, he got onto his hands and knees then awkwardly crawled onto his big sister's lap. She settled him into optimal punishmentary sieving position, just as she'd observed her mother do dozens of times, when he'd still been her father, sliding his torso forward by right-handly pressing his derriere upward while pushing his head downward with her left hand. Feeling highly vulnerable with his backside upturned and aware that he was facing an imminent paddling, Carlton struggled to fight back childish sobs. Once his sleeper's seat flap was unbuttoned and lowered by his girlish disciplinarian, the cool air making his plump exposed buttocks shiver, he couldn't hold them back any longer. Ah, wahoo, ahoo, tears began to form in the corners of his eyes, as his five-year-old body again betrayed his adult consciousness. Don't cry, Carl tied not yet, anyway because I've got good news. Nantessa reached back with her right hand, picking up the wooden paddle. She gently pressed the paddle's smooth striking surface against the base of his posterior.